Tis hard to say if greater one of skill appear in writing or in judging ill, but of the two less dangerous the offence to tire our patience and mislead our sense. Some few in that benumbs air in this ten cents you're wrong for one who writes amiss. A fool might once himself alone expose, now one in verse makes many more in prose. Tis with our judgments as our watches, none good used to like it, each believes its own. In poets, as true geniuses, but rare, true taste is seldom as the critics share. Both must alike from having derived their light, these born to judge as well as those two write. Let such teach others who themselves excel and censure freely who have written well authors are partial to their wit this true but are not critics to their judgment too yet if we look more closely we shall find most have the seeds of judgment in their mind nature affords at least a glimmering light the lines are touched but faintly are drawn right but as the slightest sketch of justly traced is by a colouring the more disgraced so by false learning is good sense defaced some are bewildered in the maze of schools and some make coxcombs nature but more fools in search of wit these clues their common sense and then turn critics in their own defence each burns alike who can or cannot write or with the rivals or ye next spite all fools still have an itching to the right and fain would be upon the laughing side if maybe a scribble in apollo's spite there are who judge still worse than he can write some have at first for wits and poets pass turn critics next and prove play fools at last some neither have can for wits nor critics pass as heavy mules are neither horse nor ass those half-learned witlings numbers in our isle as half-formed insects on the banks of nile unfinished things one knows not what to call their generation so equivocal to tell them would a hundred tongues require or one thing with them might a hundred tire but you who seek to give a merit fame and justly bear a critic's noble name be sure yourself and your own reach to know how far your genius taste and learning go launch not beyond your depth be discreet and mark that point where sense and dullness meet nature to all things fix the limits fit and wisely curb man's proud pretending wit on the land where here the ocean gains in other parts it leave white sandy plains thus in the soul where memory prevails the solid power of the understanding fails where beams of warm imagination play the memory soft figures melt away one science only will one genius fit so vast this art so narrow human wit not only bound to peculiar arts but often those confined to single parts like king we lose the conquest gained before by vain ambition still to make him more each might his several province well commend would all but stoop to what they understand first follow nature and your judgment frame by her just standard which is still the same unerring nature still divinely bright one clear unchanged and universal light at once the source and end a test of art Art from that fund each just supply provides, works without show and without pomp resides. In some fair body does the informing soul with spirits feeds, with figure fills the whole. Each motion guides and every nerve sustains. Itself unseen, but the effect remains. Some to whom heaven in wit been profuse want as much more to turn it to its use. For wit and justice are often at strife, though men at each other's aid like men and wife. Tis more to guide than spur to muse his steed, restrain his fury than provoke his speed. The winged courser like a generous horse shows much true metal when you check his course. Those rules of old discovered, not devised, are nature still, but nature methodized. Nature, like liberty, is but restrained by the same laws which are first is self-ordained. Hear how learned Greece her useful rules and diets, when to repress and when to indulge our flights. High on Parnassus stop her sons she showed, and pointed out those arduous prostate they trod, held from afar aloft the immortal prize, and earns to rest by equal steps to rise, just precepts from that great empire is given she drew from them for what they derived from heaven the generous critic found the poet's fire and taught the world with reason to admire then critics the muse's handmaid proved to dress her charm and make her more beloved but following which from that invention strayed who couldn't win the mistress vote the maid against the poets their own arms they turned sure to hate most men from whom they learned so modern apothecaries taught the art by doctors bills to play the doctor's part bold in practice of mistaken rules prescribed apply and called their masters fools some of the leaves of ancient authors pray nor time nor moss ever spoiled so much as they some dryly plain without invention aid while dull receipts of home poems may be made these leave the sense they're learning to display and theme explain the meaning quite away
You then, whose judgment the right course would steer, know well your ancient proper character, his fable subject scope on every page, religion, country, genius of his age, without all these at once before your eyes. Cavil you may, but never criticize. Be Homer works you study and delight, read them by day and meditate by night. Thence from your judgment went the maxims bring and trains the muses upward to their spring, still with itself compared to text peruse, and let your comment be the Mantuan muse. When first your marrow his botless mind, a work that outlasts the immortal Rome decide. Perhaps he seemed above the critic's law, but from nature found a scorn to draw. But then to examine the every part he came, nature and Homer were he found the same. Convinced, amazed, he checked the bold design and rules as strict as labor worked up fine. As if the stature had overlooked each line, learned hands from ancient rules the just esteem to copy nature is to copy them. Some beauties yet not precepts can declare for hands happiness as well as care. Music resemble poetry in each, our nameless graces, which no methods teach, and which a master's hand alone can reach, if where the rules not far enough extend, since rules were made but to promote their end, some lucky license answers to the full, the intent proposed that license is a rule, thus Pegasus is their way to take, may boldly deviate from the common track, great wit sometimes may gloriously offend, and rise to faults, true critics dare not meant. From vulgar bounds with brave distorted part, and snatch a grace beyond the reach of art, which without passing though the judgment gains the heart and all the ends at once attains. In prospect thus some object please our eyes, which out of nature common order rise, the shapeless rock or hanging precipice, but to the ancients thus their rules invade, as kings dispense with laws themselves have made. Moderns, beware of if, if you must offend against the precepts. Never turn cross it, and let it be seldom and compelled by need, and have at least the precedent to plead. The critics else proceeds without remorse, seizes your fame, and puts the laws to force. I know there are to whose presumptuous thoughts those freer beauties even than them see faults. Some figures monstrous and misshaped appear, considered singly or beheld too near, which but proportion to their end, their light or place through distance Greek consults from forming grace. A prudent chief not always must display his powers in equal ranks and fair array, but with the occasion and the place comply, conceal his force, name seems sometimes to fly those of their stedgerums which errors seem, nor is it home or not, but we that dream. Still green with base each ancient altar stands above the reach of sacrilegious hands, secured from flames from every fierce rage, destructive war, and all involving age. She from each clime the learned their incense bring, here in the tongues consenting pagus ring, in praise so just let every voice be joined, and fill the general chorus of mankind, hail Bart's triumphant born in happier days, immortal heirs of universal praise, those honors which increase of ages grow, as streams roll down, enlarging as they flow. Nations unburn, your mighty names shall sound, and worlds of blood that must not yet be found. Oh, may some spark of your celestial fire, the last, the meanest of your sons inspire, um, that on weak wings from far Paris your flights close while he reads, but trembles as he writes, to teach vain wit the science little known, to admire superior sense and doubt their own. Of all the causes which conspire to blind men's erring judgment and misguide the mind, what the weak head of the strong by as rules its pride, the never failing vice of fools. Whatever nature has its worth denied, she gives in large recruits the needful pride. For as in bodies, does in souls we find what once in blood and spirit swelled with wind, pride where wit fails, steps in our defense and fills up. The almighty void of sense, if once reason drives that crowd away, truth breaks upon us with her ceaseless day. Truth, not yourself, trust not yourself, but your defects to know. Make use of every friend and every foe. A little learning is a dangerous thing. Drink deep or taste not the Berean spring. Their shallow draughts intoxicate the brain, and drinking largely sobers us again. Third at first sight, which what the muse empires. In parts, in fearless youth, we tempt the heights of arts, 
while from the bound level of the mind, short views we take nor see the lengths behind, but more advanced behold with strange surprise, new distant scenes of endless science rise, so pleased at first the towering Alps we try, the mount over veils and seem to tread the sky, the internal snow appears already past, and the first clouds of mountains seem the last, but those attained we tremble to survey, the glowing labors of the lengthened way, the increasing prospect eyes our wondering eyes, hills peep over hills and alps and alps arise, a perfect judge will read each work of wit with the same spirit that this author writ survey the whole nor seek the slight faults to find where nature moves and rapture find warms the mind nor lose for that malignant dull delight, the generous pleasure to be charmed with wit. But in such lays that never ebb or flow, correctly cold or regularly low, that shunning folds one quiet tenor keep, we cannot be blamed indeed, but we may sleep when wit, what's nature, what affects the heart. It's not the exactness of peculiar parts, it's not the lip or eye or we be beauty call, but the joint force and full result of all. Thus, when we view some well proportioned dome, the world's just wonder, oh, even thine, oh, Rome. No single parts and equally surprised, all comes united to the admiring eyes. No monstrous height or breadth or length appear. The whole at once is bold and regular. Whoever thinks a faultless piece to see thinks what never was, no is, no ever shall be in every work. Regard the writer's end, since none can compass more than they can attend. And if the means be just the conduct true, applause in spite of trivial faults is due. As men of breeding, sometimes men of wit, avoid great errors, must the less commit. Neglect the rules of each verbal critic lays, for not to know some travels is a praise. Most critics fond of some subservient art still make the whole depend upon the Apart. They talk of principles, but not notions remains, and all to one love fully sacrifice. Once on a time, lamented night, they say, a certain bard encountering on the way, discords in terms as just with looks and sage as ever could Dennis in the Greek and stage, concluding all were desperate slots of fools who durst depart from Aristotle's rules, or author happy in a judge so nice, produced display and begged the knight's advice. Made him observe the subject and the plot, the manners, passions, unities, what not, all which exact to the rule were brought about, were but a combat in the list left out. What leave the combat out? Knight exclaims, Yes, or we must renounce the stage right. Not so, by heaven, he answers in a rage. Knight, squires, and steeds must enter on the stage. Oh, vast the throng the stage can never contain. Then build a new or act it in a plain. Thus critics of let judgment can caprice. Curious, not knowing, not exact, but nice. Forms short ideas and offending arts. As most in manners by love of parts. Some to concede alone their taste combined and glittering thoughts struck out in every line. Pleased with a work where nothing just or fit, one glaring chaos and a heap of wit. Poets like painters thus unskilled to trace the naked nature and the living grace with gold and jewels covered every part and hide thee with ornaments their want of art. True wit is nature to advantage dressed, what oft was thought but never so well expressed. Something whose truth convinced at sight we find that gives us back the image of our might as shades more sweetly recommend with light so modest plainness sets of springly witful works may have more wit than does them good as bodies perish through the excess of blood others for languish all their care express and value books as women men for dress their praise is still, their style is excellent, the sense they humbly take upon content. Words are like leaves, and where they are most abound, much fruit of sense beneath is rarely found. False eloquence, like the prismatic glass, is gaudy color spread on every place. The face of nature was no more survey at Claire's alike without distinction, gay, but true expression like the unchanging sun clears and improves whatever it shines upon. It gilds all object, but it alters none. Expression of dress of thought and still appears more decent and more suitable. A vile conceit and pop to as words expressed is like a clown of regal purple dressed for different styles with different subjects sort as several guards of country town and court. Some by old words to fame have made pretense. Ancients in phrase and moderns in their sense. Such labored nothings in their strange and style amaze the unlearned and make the learned smile. Unlucky as for Dougal in the play, the sparks of awkward vanity display what the fine gentleman won't west today. And but to mimic.